Okay. Uh, last day we have discussed about the for loop and while loop, and we have one more loop to discuss under Java programming. That is a do while loop. Actually, we have discussed a never ending while loop also with the break and continue. But um, this do while loop is uh, something similar to that. But uh, the condition can be mentioned at the end. So sometimes we need this do while loop because, like, when we want to do something immediately without checking the condition and then check the condition, then the do while is solution. Right. So because like when okay think about when we are downloading a file when we are downloading a file so it will not it will immediately start downloading without checking the disk space but when you're copying a file it will first check the disk space whether the space is enough if space is enough it will start the file copying process but when you are downloading a file it will first start the download and then check the space whether the space is enough so that is those are two uh, situations. The first situation where you first check, that is like uh, if, uh, oh, sorry, while loop, that is like while loop or maybe like for loop, you first check it. And if everything okay, it will start. But uh, the other one is, so more, more similar, more uh, actually more, that, that is a really good example for while loop. The other one is the downloading process, you will start and then check that is, Similar to do while loop. Okay, let's see how it works. Mm, I will uh, I will start a new program uh, class. Let's say uh, fourteen, and uh, let's create the main method. Okay, let's introduce uh, introduce a variable int mm, one and we can say do your start your start the process. So what to do? So let's say system dot h and then uh, h equal h plus plus simply implementing it by one and finally you check the condition while you can check the condition mm, h mm, while h less than uh, or equal to 10 you do this so when this like when this while h you terminate the okay let's see by executing this You can see it's printing up to 10, right? Only thing is you are checking the condition at the end. You are checking the condition at the end. That's the only concern. Okay, shall we do this quickly? Now uh, we have learned the basic principles. Basic principles means that we have learned about the se uh, sequence, selection, repetition, and operators. So we have some knowledge about Java, but still not really, it's, it's not a sound knowledge. Still, we have surface knowledge about uh, how it works when compared with Python. Now we know actually syntactical differences of these sequence, selection, and repetition. So what are the syntactical differences? So, but the, the next thing is like, uh, can we implement a different uh, program using Java? So which we didn't do in Python. Actually, Python also can be used in object-oriented applications. But uh, Java is like started with the object-oriented application. It began, so its programs, Java programs are anyway object-oriented. 
So here Python has both object oriented and structured support. So let's see, let's try to implement a Java class with basic object oriented principles, right? So in order to do that, I will uh, copy the code and start a new one. And I will name the class as account or bank account. Right, I will name the class as account or bank account. Typically in a bank account, so what you can do is you can do few things. So what you can do normally with a bank account? Yes. If you have a bank account, what you can do? Minaga? You can like, you can um, put in uh, money, you can, so you can withdraw can deposit money. money. Okay, what else? Uh, you can uh, withdraw money. You can withdraw money. Mm. Correct. Okay, therefore, uh, actually, this is a real life representation. I, I said that the blueprint, blueprint or the template. Template or the blueprint tells that, okay, this is the class template. I will write here. Okay, in the top box i have to write the class name that is bank account it supports operations like deposit withdraw these are supported maybe calculate interest mm, view balance Okay, those are the things it will be supporting. These are the functionalities. And as, as uh, these are methods or functions, as attributes, um, as attributes, you can see any way you need a balance. Right? You need balance and maybe you need a product name. Uh, customer, which related to this. Maybe uh, their social security number or their national identity card number. In the uh, USA, it is SSN. Uh, and uh, maybe it can be EIN. Uh, in uh, Sri Lanka, it is NIC. So anyway, customer identification, I'll put customer ID there. And uh, balance, uh, product name, maybe interest rate. If they're paying interest, uh, interest rate. Mm, and whether the type of uh, the account, whether it's a balance, whether it's a saving account or checking account or current account. So likewise, you need to maintain these details about the bank account. That is how we see bank account as a template. Okay, so you can draw this in your book because we are going to implement this. This is the class. Class bank account has balance. Uh, oh, interest rate should be something wrong. Interest rate, it should be, oh, sorry, my mistake. Let me write it back. Single trend. So please uh, write this in your book. Typically, you are writing the class name in the top. So this is like a table with three cells, right? Then uh, you can write uh, customer, customer ID, uh, balance, interest rate. ACC type. Account type, uh, customer ID balance, interest rate account type, and okay, these are the main things. Product name. And whether the yeah, type is basically check in no car. And then you have to withdraw, deposit. It's a function. Functions you are showing is in brackets. Withdraw. Uh, balance, check balance. 
and finally a deposit withdraw check balance and uh, what else transfer maybe it's also a function you can transfer funds calculate interest okay this is how you write class name class name followed by the attributes and then uh, the methods so these are called attributes these are called methods use another color to represent them this is the class name Okay, I hope you are done. Finished or oh, still doing? Yeah, I just finished. Okay. Let's go to the coding part now, where the real implementation comes of these and custom ID, balance, interest rate, account type, product name. These are the attributes. So we will uh, use same attributes here, right? Same attribute names. Let's use the same attribute names. Mm back to this and actually here when we are using the attribute name you have to follow the java rules that is customer id maybe it is integer you can say customer id you have to give a data type and then balance is a float or double double means like it is a float in point value follow the java rules then uh, interest rate is also a floating point rate you can set that as well account type is maybe you can say savings or check-in that is string that is capital s string 
Then the product name is also string. Okay, you have given the Java identity to uh, the class names now. You have declared them. Let's save as the same name bank account dot Java. Bank account dot Java. Okay. Your first task is over now. The second task is define the methods. Define the methods. Actually, so speaking, I have done small mistake. This should be declared outside this because it should be shared by other methods. So when we need to share with the others, need to be global. So we just discussed this in Python also. So in order to make this global, I'm just declaring this outside the main method. Otherwise, the variables inside main method is applicable only inside the main method. To avoid that, I will set the variables here where I can access to any other method as well. So what are the other methods? A deposit. Anyone can deposit, so I'll make this public. But if it is uh, like normally, if no one can do that except this bank account, we have to make this private, right? So if it is public, anyone can execute this method without implementing the object without having like without you had a unit to implement the object but anyone can call this method not just this class so that means like okay deposit can be done through cda a machine deposit can be done through a transfer deposit can be done through direct deposit a check deposit is possible likewise different systems will be able to do the deposit so therefore i will make this public but somebody else can think in different way and make this private or default. I will tell you the accessible areas when this is public, when this is protected, when this is default, and when this is uh, with the default, protected, private, and public. So there are four status. But still, we have not learned that. Don't worry about that for the moment. But I will explain that. Those are called access modifiers in Java. Right? access modifiers in java that part i will teach later okay then the method is public and deposit will you will should give us a message a confirmation i will give bool uh, because the it, it should be yes or no if deposit successful yes if not it, it is not right or you can the boolean okay public boolean and uh, then uh, you need to write the deep, uh, class or some uh, method name that is deposit. Okay. Then actually, in order to deposit, you need to give some money, right? Double uh, money. You need to deposit some money, right? To uh, it should be to a given account. But for the moment, just consider only about the money. And what should happen to the balance? This uh, balance means in this class, in this object, the balance, in this object, the balance should be increased with the deposit. So you can say plus equal. Why plus equal? So that is another way of writing deposit. The current, this balance is equal to this balance plus the money. You can write like this, but the easy way or the short way of writing that is removing this balance and keep the operator plus equal. So then it will be add to the existing balance. And once this is done, right? Once this is done, you have to return true. Why? Because so this is expecting Boolean outcome. So you are returning true in this method once it is done. You can either you can do a check if you want. Right? If this dot balance is greater than so let's set the all balance. Let's keep the all balance uh, double all balance is that this all balance is this the balance initially after that you increment you increase 
then you are checking if this this, this dot balance is uh, greater than the alt balance that means this has done they have done this and then you can say return true else you can say return false Actually, after the deposit, the balance should be increased. That is how you are verifying the deposit with the, whether the deposit is successful. Let's compile the class and see if there are any issues. To compile that, you can use Java uh, C Bank Account or Java. Oh, I got a lot of errors. Yeah, the brackets. Number one, fix it. Done. No errors. You can see it's because of a single bracket. Compile, interpret, but nothing will happen, right? Because nothing will happen because we didn't ask something. In the main method is empty. When main method is main method is the running part of this, but it is empty. Nothing will happen. So you can do something like this. Mm, you can try to deposit something. To call that, we can say deposit. But in order to deposit, you have to create object because class cannot do that. Bank account, let's say my account is the object name, equal new bank account. You are creating a new object. Now object is created. That object you can deposit. Some money, maybe let's say deposit 2000. Your deposit is successful. So if you want to check your balance, so let's define another method, public double view balance. No need to input anything. So you are just getting the balance. Return this dot balance that can be used here to print the balance system dot out this might be a little complex but i'll explain print ln you can initially print initially print uh, my account dot view balance And after that, you can print it again after the operation. So let's see the output now, compiling, interpreting. And you can see initially it's zero, after depositing 2000, it's 2000. Right? It's zero, after depositing, it's 2000. Right, that is the functionality here. So let's try this and gradually increase the amount of chords and see what will happen. Actually, this is how we are designing a class. The methods need to be defined, attributes need to be defined, then the interaction between these methods attributes need to be defined. In the implementation process, you can implement the object and call these methods and attributes. Actually, since these are within the class, you can still call the attributes also without weaving the balance. You can just, without using the method, you can say my account dot uh, balance. That will work, right? That will work. You can get the balance. Without reaching the method, you can just view the balance. Still, the uh, execution will be same. Still, you can see the output is same. Therefore, you can directly access the variable, but so we will learn something called encapsulation in future where the direct access to variable is restricted. I will tell why. But for the moment, just try this code. We have implemented two methods, uh, including the main method, there are three methods, but we have defined our own two methods, that is deposit and view balance. So let's uh, try to withdraw now. 
right? Let's try to withdraw now. To withdraw also, you have to define a similar method like this and uh, copy and pasting and uh, public uh, again boolean so but anyone cannot withdraw this should be private so this should be private um, the reason is that depositing can be done by anyone but withdrawing is need to be controlled uh, so that uh, since we have not discussed about uh, access modifiers let's keep it public for the moment later we'll do with the proper access modifier modifiers let's withdraw withdraw and double money again we are going to withdraw money so what you're going to do is get in the old balance and again uh, this time minus equal but before doing that you have to check uh, for something because like in order to withdraw let's say your bank account has two thousand dollars but you are going to withdraw three thousand dollars that is not possible because you are going to withdraw more than like withdraw something above withdraw, withdraw something exceeding the current balance that is not permittable so you have to check whether the balance is enough if this 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 dot balance is uh, greater than the withdrawal amount money if this dot balance is this dot balance is greater than the money that you request then only uh, you need to withdraw uh, so I'm editing that part. This dot balance is greater than money. Then you can withdraw. Withdraw can be done using um, this dot balance minus equal uh, minus equal the money. If not, you should not withdraw. Else, uh, return false. Maybe you can set an error. So those things can be done later. So this is how we are withdrawing money. Let's try to withdraw something uh, from the account now and i'm copying and pasting this again uh, so let's view balance the proper way is the view balance calling the view balance method because it's not the variable but uh, both will work here i will tell how to restrict the variable in encapsulation form you are trying to withdraw withdraw same 2000 uh, let's see what will happen when you are trying to do that bank account i'm running it and compiling interpreting and you can see uh, first one balance is zero you have deposited right so you can set a message let's set a message at least otherwise if nothing is meaningful in order to make meaningful let's set a message message is equal to empty here i'm setting a message uh, this dot message equal this dot message equal uh, deposit successful deposit successful um, let's copy here the setting deposit failed because you need to communicate the status and you need to communicate the status uh, to the viewer and here you can say withdrawal successful and uh, at the same time you can say withdrawal failed here in the else okay let's try it now oh, we are not printing the message we have to print the message as well in the view balance i will uh, return this okay but uh, you need to print the message to to print the message um, using system to out of print and so after uh, after depositing or before depositing you can just try to print the message or after depositing let's print print and the message my account dot msg need to be printed so let's try to withdraw okay let's see what will happen now compiling interpreting you can see deposits are zero balance is zero deposit successful but withdrawal failed the reason is you are trying to withdraw 2000 which is not a greater than the current balance but if you try to withdraw something like thousand this should be okay
Okay, now okay, deposit and withdrawal successful. You have your balance is thousand. And you are printing the balance, and therefore I think we can add a small message here. Uh, your balance is so that is a proper way to display because always you need to carefully display the messages to the screen. The reason is because the viewers they don't know how what coding and what kind of coding is there. But you have to present something meaningful to the end user. You okay, know your balance is zero, deposit successful, your balance is 2000, withdrawal successful, your balance is 1000. That has some meaning. Okay, you can add this part of code into your code too. First add the method and then I will show you. But be careful with the brackets, be careful with the brackets. Sometimes if a bracket missing, the entire will code will uh, go wrong. 